I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Compton Abbas. It's about three miles to the south of Shaftesbury in Dorset. And we're going to be doing a roughly four mile circular-ish walk, taking in a couple of high ridges along Compton Down and Melbury Hill and then on to Fontmel Down. I'll be having a little exploration of the village of Compton Abbas. And along the way, we're hopefully gonna see some of the most spectacular views in Dorset. Now I say hopefully, it's uh, about half past 11 now, uh, and I'm filming um, just about the start of October. It was an incredibly misty, foggy morning. And well, there's still a fair bit of that about, but it is beginning to lift. The sun is out, so fingers crossed we're going to be okay for views. I did come here a couple of uh, weeks ago and took some photographs, so I, I may well use some of those. So, do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a free car park at the top of Spread Eagle Hill, just to the south of Melbury Abbas. And from here, you have some stunning views over to the west. Well, hopefully later on. <laughs> I'll put up some pictures of what it looked like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this mist does go. It's about, what, 11.15 now. I mean, you can see there is some sun trying to poke through and there is some blue sky there, but uh, we'll see how we go. We're going to head off in uh, this direction ahead of me, that sort of uh, uh, northwest to Melbury Hill. We'll see how we get on. I think we're going to be okay folks. The uh, sun is certainly burning off all the, the mist and fog and the, the visibility is improving all the time. So I'm currently walking along uh, Compton Down and what I'll do is I just pan round. I will put some photos of a clearer day but uh, this is looking over to the east. You can probably just make out on the ridge over there some trees and that's Zigzag Hill. The B3081 goes up there and uh, it's one of the windiest one mile stretches of road in the UK. I think there are five or six bends and at least three hairpins. And then just panning around, I guess it is very misty still. There is an airfield on that ridge. You can't actually see that to that well on a normal day because there's a hedge in the way. But uh, it's one of the most spectacular airfields in the UK, established in the 1960s when a, a farmer allowed someone to keep a tiger moth there and it, it basically grew from there. Okie doke. So we are going to continue along this ridge here and I can just about make, yeah, out Melbury Hill just over the brow, which is our next destination. Compton Down was bought by the, the National Trust in memory of the, the novelist and poet Thomas Hardy to protect the landscape in which uh, a lot of his novels of the Blackmoor Vale are, are set. They bought 60 hectares at Fontmel Down first in 1977 and then bought Compton Down and Melbury Hill afterwards. I just noticed some earthworks here that uh, worth investigating. Look at an old map. I think there was once uh, a chalk pit here. And this see, looks like the remains of a, a small building, a, a window frame, a flagpole. I wonder if this is where, certainly in the Second World War, there was a gun emplacement around about here that was protecting uh, a radar station at the top of Spread Eagle Hill. So I'm wondering if this had anything to do with it. 
I'm just about to come off Compton Down and over there in the distance is Melbury Hill which we shall be uh, ascending shortly. I wish I brought my stick now <laughs> but from here we've got some really great views looking to the north and uh, well, let's have a pan around. You do get some great shadows uh, this time of year with the sun being a little bit lower uh, very far distance. Whether we'll see much of that later on is Shaftesbury. We'll see when we get to the top of the hill. But down in the valley below, that's Melbury Abbas. And you can see the, the church there as well. That's the Church of uh, St Thomas's, built in 1851, I believe. Okay, well, let's uh, enjoy the downhill bit and uh, get ready for the uphill bit. I'm halfway up Melbury Hill and uh, there's something here I want to show you <laughs> which is just as well can I I can then have a pit stop and catch my breath back but just along the side uh, of the hill there's this earthwork um, I don't know if you can see that there there's a definite hump and then if we have a look over onto this side it continues along here and it's a uh, well, it's about 10 metres wide in places, a couple of metres high, with a ditch. And it basically is an old ancient uh, land or territorial boundary rather than, uh, than anything uh, defensive. So that's the, uh, the next part of the climb. It gets a little bit steeper there. We'll have a pan round just to see where we've come from. Hopefully it's beginning to be clear enough uh, for you to see something out there. Isn't that beautiful with the church down in the, in the valley. And uh, there's Zigzag Hill that I was pointing out. And then this is uh, looking back at Compton Down where we've uh, just been. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it to the top of Melbury Hill, one of the uh, highest points in Dorset, well over 860 feet. And on a clear day, well, real 360 degree views. So behind me over here is Shaftesbury. And I don't want to keep on going on about it, but again, on a clear day, you should be able to easily make out, well, at least a couple of churches up here in Shaftesbury. There's uh, St. Peter's, a 14th century church, which is on top of the hill, and then St. James's Church, which was rebuilt in 1866, which is a, a little bit further down. And uh, up on here, just to prove that it is a, a high point, <laughs> is uh, a little trig point which uh, Logan has just bagged. Now there was a, a beacon up here back in 1588, one of the Armada beacons. Uh, there was a series of them uh, between Plymouth and London, supposed to warn everybody of the um, approaching Spanish fleet. And uh, the beacon itself was in a, a hollow sort of circle embankment of about eight metres in diameter. And uh, there's supposed to be an even bigger uh, circular embankment, 120 metres in diameter, but I've done a little bit of searching. I can find neither, but there you go. Well, now we've got the downhill part, and I never know which is better for my knees, uphill or downhill. 
But anyway, just before we leave the top of the hill, I'll give you one final pan round and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to see something. I know views don't always come that uh, uh, across as being that great on a GoPro, but that's looking uh, east and then it's gradually panning round and uh, it really does give you that typical Dorset landscape of rolling hills at Shaftesbury. I mean, on a very clear day, they say you can be, you can see as far as, uh, you know, Glastonbury Tor, and then this is looking to the, uh, to the west. So, right, we're gonna start making our way downhill, and we're gonna make, uh, well, East Compton is our next destination. Now to get there, Obviously we've got to come down Melbury Hill and uh, through a, a rather delightful little valley. Well now we're making our way down, we're actually getting a better view of Melbury uh, Abbas down there. And uh, Zigzag Hill, as I mentioned before, behind the trees and then... Uh, uh, actually but I can make out some glinting aeroplanes on the airfield right at the, the top of the ridge there. And uh, you might hear the odd aeroplane buzzing around. Oh, I love the, the way, again, the shadows showing the, um, uh, the, those little ridges on the side of the hill there. I wonder if there's been some sort of medieval uh, farming there before, I don't know. Well, I tell you, I'm so glad I continued with this walk. It is now quite glorious. You wouldn't think it was the same day. So there's Melbury Hill behind me, where we've just come down. Anyway, uh, we need to kick on. So we're gonna continue down this path here and alongside that field to East Compton in the distance there. Oh, it really is gorgeous now. Real shirt sleeve weather, which uh, mid-October is great. And this valley really is quite exquisite. So I've got Compton down on my left and uh, Melbury Hill behind me. And straight ahead is uh, Fontwell Down, which uh, will be our return leg. Well, I've made our way uh, off that valley into a little uh, hamlet of uh, East Compton. And in front of me here is the old church of St Mary's. Well, there's been a church here since Saxon times, but the 13th century church that was here was in such bad repair that it was replaced in the mid-1800s with a, a new building in a more central position in Compton Abbas, just down the road. Uh, that was uh, next to a newly opened turnpike road that linked Shaftesbury and Blandford. It's now the A350. And a lot of stone from this old church was used for the, the new one. The process of moving churches took nearly 15 months. But only the late 15th century tower and west wall of the nave remain. It's now owned by the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. Uh, they've owned it since the 1980s. And just to the side of it, you probably hear some yapping dogs in, <laughs> in the background. Uh, there's this lovely old, or well, the remains of a, a church village cross amongst the graves. And uh, there's an old stone mounting block uh, for the farmer's wife just by the entrance as well. We're now making our way into uh, the village of Compton Abbas. It gets its name from, uh, well, it's Anglo-Saxon Compton, which is village in a valley, and uh, Abbas from Shaftesbury Abbey. The, the land was owned by the Abbas. It's basically three hamlets uh, very close to each other, East Compton, West Compton, and Twyford. Oh, wow, what a fantastic place. Old forge car restoration. Look at some of those old signs. And look, the old fuel pump next to the tree, recommended by S.O. Blue. Some very pretty houses here. Looks like an old Methodist uh, chapel. 
on the left here. And uh, what have we got here? Ah, uh, the old reading room, which is just behind this hedge here. And I was reading that that was once used in the Second World War by the Home Guard for rifle uh, shooting practice. And then just on the right here, the old forge. But we need to head up these steps through a little path to get to the church, which uh, means we can circumnavigate the main road. Well, just before we have a look at the, the newer church, the building next to it is, I think this is the church hall. It's the old school. It, it, it ceased to be a school in 1933. Oh, the village telephone box and bus shelter underneath uh, some trees. Of course, there's no telephone in there, but if I have a little peep inside, there are some um, information boards. I'll put uh, some photographs up on screen, and then if you want to read them, you can freeze the frame. And they've also got on the wall, um, looks like six walks that you can do in the area, but what a lovely touch. And this is the, the new St Mary's Church, built in 1866 to replace the earlier one up the road. And it's got, uh, well it's now got five bells, I think it took three bells from the old church. But as you can see it's a chancel, nave, a narrow south aisle and south tower over the porch with a rather magnificent stone brooch spire. It really is quite exquisite in the golden autumnal sunshine with the blue sky in the background. Let's go have a little look inside. Now I can never find the lights in the, these churches so this may well look a little bit dark but at least it'll give you an idea inside. Oh, there are some superb stained glass windows by the altar. Beautiful. Now that the window that I wanted to look at is just in the, the corner here and hopefully the sun's going to be in the right direction as well but yeah there we go. You can make out the old church on the right hand side of the window. We're just about to make our way out of Compton Abbas. Beautiful houses uh, as you go through. Now, if you're following this walk, I know a few people do and do the walk afterwards. As the sun goes behind just about the only black cloud there is here. <laughs> oh, I've got flies on me now. Um, need to look out for this signpost that says uh, to Gore Clump. And then we follow that and that's going to take us southwards to uh, Font mail down. Ah, time for a little dip refreshment, a little chalk stream. In fact, the source isn't too far from here, a little spring. And uh, this joins up with the Collier Brook, I think it's called, and then becomes the Font Mel Brook. And I guess it eventually flows into the River Star. Ah, this is our start of the gradual ascent on the bottom slopes. And this is uh, this must be a little ancient uh, track, looking at the the banks either side with the trees. Well, <laughs> while there are still plenty of them about, I love the way he makes me pick them all for. There's not very many black ones left. That's the only problem. Well, a few. But I think most of them have all gone fella, but there we go. Yeah, boy. Oh, some more stunning views to, to look at uh, just on the um, uh, southern side of uh, the village. So just behind me here, that's Melbury Hill. And then uh, I'll just give you a, a quick look round. So there's Compton down. And then I can just about make out the car park where we started right at the beginning at the top of the ridge. And this along here is Fontmel Down, which is where we're, we're going next.
watched Logan found. Ah, boundary stone. Now, regular viewers will know I love finding these. I guess this must be an old parish one. And there we go, boundary stone number two has been duly discovered. And just in front of me here is another one of those old ancient uh, earthworks. It's, it's difficult to make some of it out now because, uh, believe it or not, there was a golf course uh, up here between the, the walls, so I expect some of the landscape may have changed as a result of that. Well, I'm nearly at the end now, uh, the car park is just in the very far distance on the top of the ridge there. And just in front of me is a, an area known as uh, Clubman's Down, which has got a lot of history attached to it. The Clubmen were country folk whose attitude to the English Civil War was very much a plague on both your houses. <laughs> because the Civil War was, what, 1642 to 1651. Anyway, the Clubmen uh, were basically fed up with the armies of both the Royalists and the Parliamentarians damaging their crops, stealing their livestock and uh, forcibly conscripting them to become uh, or join each of uh, the relevant armies. So they basically took up arms, but often they just had staves and pitchforks and clubs. They were basically a band of local vigilantes. And the clubmen were often led by members of the clergy. And indeed, round these parts, uh, back in 1645, uh, the Reverend Thomas Bravel, uh, Reverend of Compton Abbas, uh, had a meeting of something like 3,000 clubmen here on the down, hence its name. Uh, they often used to wear a white ribbon as their uniform. But unfortunately, the, the clubmen had their comeuppance when something like 2,000 of them were defeated by Cromwell's dragoons at uh, nearby Hambledon Hill. And uh, they were defeated quite easily. Anyway, less of this history and uh, we're nearly at the end of the walk. So we've just got to do our last little bit, as I say, a long clubman uh, down back to the car park and goodness me it's a lot clearer now than it was <laughs> a few hours ago and let's have one final pan look across this uh, quite fantastic view. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we thought we'd do the end scene up here at the top of Melbury Hill with all these views <laughs> We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the sun did come out in the end. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please uh, do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do, of course, check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. Well, we're going to find a pint somewhere uh, in Shaftesbury, I think, is our next destination. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.